Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. In front of me is a box that we will be unboxing. Uh, you guys get upset that the channel's called Harbour Unboxed, yet we don't unbox any hardware. Though technically when we review the stuff, it's it's been pre-unboxed, but you're getting to see the unboxing experience for this one. And for those of you who don't like unboxing videos, it's not going to be simply we take the card out and go, ooh, ah. Uh, of course, there'll be no benchmarks or anything like that, but I do want to discuss some of the leaked uh, performance claims, some of the performance claims that NVIDIA themselves have recently made, talk about what I'm hearing uh, with stuff like availability, of course, discuss the price specs and how this thing is meant to compare to the 4090. Of course, this is the new GeForce RTX 5090, and there is an unboxing embargo. So I thought normally we skip those, but we'll, act we'll actually unbox the card. I haven't done that yet. I've only taken the, the seal off this cardboard box because I didn't realize this was part of the uh, unboxing adventure. But I haven't done any benchmarking, any testing yet, so I want to get this thing unboxed as quick as possible. We'll put a video together, which you'll be able to see when the embargo lifts, and then a few days later will be our in-depth review with all the benchmarks and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Uh, as I said, I've already pulled the tear off here, so this should... Um, I think I've got it up the right... Oh, oh, it's around. I'll do it this way. So yeah, I'll do this uh, inverted. I'm, I'm not very good at gaming with an inverted mouse, but let's hope I can unbox in inverted mode. So we've opened the standard packaging and now there's a, a GeForce cardboard box. So that's exciting. Uh, and there's a little NVIDIA design at the top here. So there's two arrows there. Oh yeah, okay, you pull them. And then I guess you can lift this out. All right, it's all pretty standard. Jeez, that's uh, rel quite heavy. Another box within a box. Um, probably a cable adapter and whatnot. We'll put this aside. Okay, so in our little accessories box here, yeah, we have a four eight pin to the 12 pin adapter. Um, so you guys are familiar with this. Not sure how this one's gonna go with that, but I'm sure all the melting problems and stuff like that have been solved by this point, because that would be crazy if they hadn't. And here we are, the, I guess the, I don't know, is this the official GeForce RTX uh, 5090 box? Is this what you would get if you bought an FE model? I actually, I, I don't know the answer to that, but this is what reviewers get. And it has, again, two arrows. So I guess we pull, yep, pull those out. So those little side bits are done. And does this lift off now? Yeah, it does. So really cool, neat packaging. It's meant to be eco-friendly packaging. Not sure. There's the card. So for a, I believe it's 575 watt card. It's a dual slot design. Quite heavy for a dual slot card. Uh, obviously there's a fair bit of copper. Uh, I think it's a 3D vapor chamber in this card. So yeah, it looks good. Feels good. Quite a compact card. Now, just some basic stuff I know about this card from what we saw at CES or what Tim and Balin saw is that it is a dual through design. So both of these fans here, these two fans can go straight through. So there's no PCB in this section or this section, which seems a bit odd. The PCB is actually here. It's almost like a mobile card. But because of that, you get maximum air throughput. It uh, doesn't have to push the air through the card, which creates a lot of pressure. Uh, there's more turbulence. It makes it louder and just reduces airflow. So they've been able to maximize the airflow through the card. And they've also been able to maximize the fin density. So you'll notice the fins are very thin and there's a lot of them. So a lot of airflow and a lot of surface covered, which results in very efficient cooling performance. And yeah, so there's what is called a horizontal 3D vapor chamber. So the what would traditionally be like your heat pipes stick out either side of it through the card. So again, those that through design allows you to uh, get maximum cooling efficiency out of that. It is obviously, of course, a copper vapor chamber. It's nickel plated. They're using liquid metal for the contact or interface material between the GPU die and the bottom of that copper base plate. So it's nickel plated, so there shouldn't be any issues there with oxidization or pitting or whatever you may run into when using liquid metal on bare copper. So that's good. Uh, and also in terms of longevity, they've got a, it's a triple uh, like rubber gasket. It's like triple ribbed, let's say, around the, the GPU package to make sure the liquid metal doesn't escape there and create any short circuits or, or problems there that would almost certainly kill the GPU. So the liquid metal in this card should last a long time. Uh, shouldn't have any risk of drying out or anything like that. 
hopefully. <laughs> and then up in the top of the card here, we do have the uh, power input. So just a single connector for quite a powerful GPU. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll get some nice B-roll shots of the card so you guys can get a good look at it. And I'll just go over some of the specs for those of you who aren't up to speed with how the 4090 and 5090 compare in terms of specifications. So the price is obviously $2,000 US, which is 25% more than what you can expect to pay for a 4090, or at least the 4090 MSRP. So the MSRP of the 4090 was $1,600. The MSRP of the 5090 is $2,000 US. So pff, quite an expensive product there. Now, how much faster the 5090 is going to be compared to the 4090? Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's hard to say because given the information that NVIDIA's provided uh, publicly already at this point in time, so this isn't stuff that's under embargo or NDA, strongly indicates that you're looking at about a 30% performance uplift from the 4090 to the 5090. So that's not a lot given that it's 25% uh, more expensive. That's a bit disappointing. But of course, we'll have to do our own testing and we'll let you guys know about that. But it does have a 23% larger die, 750 square millimeters. The 4090 had 16,384 CUDA cores, whereas the 5090 has 21,760. So that's 33% more cores, though the cores have been reduced by 4% in terms of clock speed to 2.41 gigahertz. There is 33% more VRAM, so 32 gigabytes in total now, opposed to 24 gigabytes. We're upgrading from a 384 bit wide memory bus to 512 bits and with the new GDDR7 memory, so that's 28 gigabits per second memory, opposed to 21 gigabits per second memory on the 4090, the memory bandwidth has increased from 1,008 gigabytes per second to 1,792 gigabytes per second. So that is 78% more memory bandwidth. So that's quite a substantial upgrade there in terms of memory bandwidth, but it looks like the uh, bottleneck there is going to be the cause based on the performance claims that we're seeing that suggest yeah, about 30% more performance for about a 25% increase in price. So yeah, as I said, we haven't done any of our own testing in-house yet. This is the first time I've actually laid eyes, laid hands in the flesh on this card. So this will be going straight into our test system as soon as I wrap up this video, install the review drivers and testing will begin. And then as I said, in a couple of days, we'll have our review for you. But what we do know is, and what we can tell you is that it's 25% more expensive based on the MSRP than the card is replacing the 4090. Now the 4090, uh, it's at least two years old at this point in time. So you've waited two years for this new product, 25% more expensive. And based on the benchmarks that are out there, it looks like it's going to be around 30% faster. So uh, if that is true, seems disappointing to me, uh, really disappointing. Uh, kind of a bummer for the industry if that is the case. And of course, this is the flagship product. It's much more expensive and much faster than say the 40, uh, sorry, the 5080 and the parts that'll be below it. So I'm interested to get your thoughts on those performance claims. Uh, let's just put it out there again, 30% faster for 25% more money. Uh, again, this is, it's not really speculation, but we haven't confirmed that information yet with our own set of benchmarks and I guess non cherry picked games and all that stuff. So it could even be worse than that. Could be 25% for 25% more money. Doesn't sound like it's going to be 40% faster uh, on average. Certainly not 50% based on the official information that we're seeing. So again, my initial takeaway from that is very disappointing. But I'd love to hear what you guys think, um, especially for those of you that were interested in spending you know, $2,000. Of course, it's an absurd amount of money, in my opinion, to spend on a graphics card. But it, it's, yeah, everyone has a different financial position and they can justify spending large sums of money differently. But yeah, let me know what you think about that. It seems based on what NVIDIA had been saying, at least to media, is that making a big performance step forward based on the previous generation has been difficult. Uh, they claim to sort of be, uh, well, nearing the limits of rasterization performance. I don't know if they mean that outright. Like, of course, rasterization performance is going to improve, but just the big leaps. And they're really focusing on AI improvements. So DLSS4, all that sort of stuff, which in my opinion, if they can, I don't really care how we get the performance to be perfectly honest. If you can load up a game and it you know, the performance is amazing, really high frame rates, great input, all that sort of stuff, then 
I don't really care how it's achieved, but unfortunately with DLSS, say three frame generation and what the initial DLSS four implementation looks to be, it really is primarily a frame smoothing technology. And then how useful of a frame smoothing technology it is really depends on your base frame rate, the type of game you're playing, whether you want to use it at all. So it's not the amazing performance enhancing feature that it's often pitched as and DLSS 4 is going to be the same. So for example, like uh, the 5070 is not going to be anywhere near as fast as a 4090. That's complete rubbish. Really that sort of thing should never be said because it's so dishonest in my opinion, because we're not talking about anything that resembles true performance. Again, anyone who tells you that the current implementations of frame generation are anything but frame smoothing, they're lying to you. And if it's from tech media, I mean, you can chuck them in the influencer category as far as I'm concerned, because that's just so far from the truth. It's not funny. It's a really impressive technology. Uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I don't want to sound like I hate frame generation or anything like that. I just hate how it's been marketed and how it's claimed to be uh, an outright performance enhancing feature when really it's smoothing your frame rate and then Depending on your base frame rate, it can be quite a jarring experience. And then arguably, if you've got a high enough frame rate, smoothing the frames further is of minimal benefit because again, it's not enhancing the input there, which is really what you want at higher frame rates, especially really high frame rates for a game like a Counter-Strike or Apex Legends, Fortnite maybe, that sort of stuff. So yeah, they're, they're struggling to squeeze much more performance out of the next generation, which, you know, fine, has its own challenges. But then to claim that you're seeing these huge 2x, 3x, 4x performance gains by using AI, it's not really true. So I'm not a big fan of that. Don't like how they've been marketed, but I haven't really liked that from day one. Of course, I'd like to get your feedback. What are you guys thinking about all this sort of frame generation stuff and the big, bold performance claims that are being made? Uh, because yeah, that's something that we'll have to address in our review. I won't be testing frame generation in my initial day one review. That'll be follow-up content because there's a whole visual analysis that has to occur there. So Tim will be doing that. He'll be diving into all that stuff um, as soon as that makes sense to do so. But look, we've seen this from day one with these sort of RTX generation GPUs. You know, DLSS really was a terrible technology initially. The initial imp implementation was very bad. They improved it, they made it good. We do think DLSS upscaling is now a key feature, though FSR upscaling has come a long way as well. So I'd say they're as close as they've probably ever been in terms of image quality and, and how they work, at least the end result, I, I mean. So yeah, DLSS is still a great upscaling feature. The frame generation thing, uh, it depends. It's certainly not a performance enhancing uh, feature in in the sense of what we normally uh, consider to be you know, frames per second. So again, I'll, there'll be much more to come on that stuff, but don't expect a big deep dive into uh, DLSS 4 in our day one review. We're going to be focused quite heavily on rasterization performance and ray tracing performance and, and ray tracing performance with upscaling. So we'll be using DLSS upscaling with the GeForce GPUs and then FSR upscaling with the Radeon GPUs. And there's going to be heaps of that sort of stuff to look at. Loads of games. We've included a lot of new games. Uh, Marvel's Rivals or Marvel Rivals rather have been uh, has been included in, in the games we'll be testing with. And there's a few new ray tracing titles and things like that. So I think for those of you that want a lot of raster benchmarks, a lot of ray tracing benchmarks, we should be able to provide all of that for you in our day one review. And then one last thing I'd just like to talk about is availability. There's already been quite a few rumblings around the internet about poor availability for these cards, um, whether it be the FE model or AIB models. And that certainly seems to be the case. Um, asking around, yeah, availability seems very bad. Like virtually no cards to speak of at this point in time. So not 100% sure what's going on there and how easy it's going to be to get your hands on one of these if you want to in the next month two months after release so that's another challenge we've already seen availability challenges with you know intel's new arc gpus uh we've seen availability challenges with stuff like the 9800x 3d though that's been due to extreme demand but even so it still sucks that if you want to buy a high-end cpu that particular high-end cpu you can't so we'll have to see how that all pans out but it seems like initial availability is going to be very bad um so probably disappointing if you do want to get your hands on one of these right away. Hopefully we don't see 
uh, basically non-existent availability and then the only way to get your hands on one is to pay scalper prices obviously don't do that just be patient and wait but you know we've seen how that plays out uh, many times in the past so that's going to do it for this really quick unboxing of this card i didn't really want to drag it out too much i mean you guys saw this card in the ces coverage it's been shown many times on many different channels so i didn't want to focus too much on the card itself just talk about the benchmarks that are out there uh, the obviously the price and what we think that means compared to the previous generation and then just touch on that availability so let me know what you guys think because obviously i haven't done my own testing yet so i don't really know where i stand on all of this i'm I'll work that over the next few days. But if it is what it seems like it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting review to tackle this one because, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's just say that. But anyway, in the meantime, I'd love to get your feedback on all these uh, various different things. I want to see where you guys are at, what you think. We did a poll. We put out a poll after the announcement during CES uh, about what you guys thought the value of the new GeForce 50 series looked like. And the results weren't terribly favorable for NVIDIA. So I'm not sure that the, the feelings around this launch have changed yet. And then, yeah, obviously it doesn't really matter until we get the reviews because it could be way better than what we're expecting. But if that was the case, I think NVIDIA would have released way better results or numbers. Anyway, uh, not much more to say on this. It is just an unboxing video, so... You know, I haven't got much to work with here, but I thought rather than skip it, I just talk about these few things that we, we've discussed in the video and that's it. So yeah, make sure you subscribed. The review will be coming in a few days and I have spent weeks upon weeks when the boys were at CES having fun. I was running benchmarks on the GeForce 40 series, the Radeon 7000 series, latest drivers on the 9800X 3D, all updated data at 1080p, 1440p and 4K, boatloads of games, heaps of stuff i said plenty of ray tracing plenty of upscaling plenty of raster stuff there so it should be a very comprehensive day one review so yeah subscribe anyway that's really gonna do it for this one i'm your host steve i'll see you again next time